All right. Welcome, everyone, to Go in 5 Minutes, episode 28. So we're going to continue talking about Go modules today. Uh, we talked last episode in episode number 27 about getting started with Go modules to do dependency management. Now, that episode is actually really important uh, to watch because it lays down the basics on what Go modules is and how you should use it and why you should use it also. So definitely go check that out. That also has some links to get way more details and get, get more into sort of the swing of it using modules. Uh, so check out a couple of those links too if you have some extra time. Today is going the next step and talking about where to actually get module code from. So uh, since basically the beginning of Go dependencies all the way through to now, uh, when you did a Go get, your dependencies would come from GitHub or GitLab or another hosted version control system. So that changes in Go modules. You still have the option to get stuff from the VCS, uh, but Go modules introduces the idea of a module server. Uh, there's a specific REST API that servers can implement, and Go get now knows how to pull module code down from these module servers using the API. So the cool stuff about having these module servers and having go get download from them is that it's pulling down zip files of code that's frozen in time at a specific tag or git sha or commit. So it's way faster than doing a git clone like go get used to do. And also the tools like Glide and Dep and, and so on, those tools also used to do git clones as well. So it's gonna be faster with those as well. So for example, if you're doing like a CI run, your CI has to check out your code. And if your code has a vendor directory, it's gotta check out all of those Git trees. Uh, and if it doesn't have a vendor directory, then you're gonna to have to run like dep ensure or glide install or whatever your other um, sort of older dependency management tool is. And that's gonna to have to do a bunch of Git clones as well. But in this module server way, you basically have a vendor directory sort of in the cloud or, or wherever you host your module server. And that thing is gonna be serving up zip files really fast. So your CI runs get faster, your local development gets faster as well. Um, and, and things are generally a little bit more reliable too because these servers can keep those zip files in their own storage and kind of freeze them in time uh, as assets instead of as version control systems that are always changing. So if someone goes and deletes a commit or deletes their whole repository or anything like that, you're still safe because those servers, those module servers are gonna hold that code in their storage for you so you don't get interrupted. So today, uh, enough of my talking. I'm gonna introduce one of the many module servers out there called Athens. I'm really fond of Athens because I'm a core maintainer on the project. I'm gonna show how it works. I'm gonna show how you can do a build using Athens. And hopefully along the way, I'm gonna show sort of why it's a little bit better than the past uh, workflows that we've had. So in the readme for episode number 28, there's a long sort of script on how you can run a demo. Uh, and I'm basically gonna follow that and you can always go and do the same exact thing. So first things first, Running Athens is fairly simple, and the website for Athens, uh, which is linked down below in this readme, uh, has a bunch of different ways that you can run Athens sort of according to what works for you. I'm gonna use Docker to run it. I'm gonna go into uh, episode 28, and I am gonna Docker run Athens. So I just pasted that in here. Athens starts up, and it's got some basic logs going on here. Okay opening up a new tab. Now I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna set up my tool chain to talk to Athens. So this is telling my go build and my go get and everything else that instead of going to version control, it should use that download API, that module rest API and go talk to localhost. That's where my Athens is running. So I'd always talk there instead of going up to the version control system. Next up, I'm gonna just destroy my entire local modules cache. So this is gonna force us to grab all new dependencies from Athens. So this is kind of simulating what you might have in your CI CD system. 
right? Those are kind of ephemeral workers that don't really carry this cash, this on disk cash around with them. And instead they rely on a server like Athens or, or any of the other module servers out there. And this would also be what happens if you're a brand new on the team and you need to like get set up with your whole environment. All right, so I'm gonna copy that, paste it in here, put in my password, and there's a lot of dependencies in there, so it took a, f a few seconds for me to delete everything. It's all deleted, and now the moment of truth. I'm gonna do my go run. All right, so we've got our go run happening. We've got a bunch of logs that say finding. Uh, this is going to get metadata from Athens about different versions of different modules, and we're still finding, while it's doing these finding uh, log lines, we're gonna go over to Athens, and we're going to see there are these endpoints that it's serving up called dot info and dot mod, right? So these are metadata pieces about a specific version of a specific module here. So this is asking for github.com slash gin at version 1.4.0. And that makes sense because the server that I'm building is built on top of gin. So then if we go down here, now we started to see some zips. These are those zip files I was talking about. These are zip files with just source code, no readmes, no images, no anything else that was in the GitHub repository. Uh, and there's no Git tree either. So these are frozen in time, just Go source code. If we go back to the Go build or the Go run output, we have gone from finding, and that was the .info and .mod download um, log lines, and now we've gone over to downloading and extracting. So downloading is those .zip log lines down here where we saw like get this .zip, get that .zip. And then extracting. So extracting is extracting the zip files as it sounds like, and then taking all that code and dumping it out into that cache, that local on disk cache that you saw me do a remove rm-rf on uh, just before I ran this go run. So let's go over and check out the server. It's on port 8080. And it's just like a, a quick little server that serves up random pictures of dogs and cats. So this is the first demo. Uh, wow, that's a random number generator there. All right. So this is the first demo, just some dogs. I'm going to go back to the home page of my awesome server. And we're going to do the second step of this demo. So let me shut down the server and we're going to go and go back and remove our entire cache again. So there's nothing on the machine anymore. Uh, I'm going to shut off Wi-Fi. So we're cut off from the internet. There's no way we can do get clones or we can go talk to any other internet services. And I'm going to do another go run. And this is going to work because Athens in its storage has stored basically my entire vendor directory. But it's also gonna be faster because instead of Athens having to go out to the internet and fetch those dependencies, because Athens didn't have those dependencies either the first time I ran this thing. Now, Athens has already gone and fetched those dependencies and stored them in its own storage. Okay, so I've got my own server and my own storage system that stores all my dependencies. So this time it's gonna work because even though I have no internet, Athens database has my dependencies. It's also gonna be faster because Athens has the dependencies in storage and storage is really fast. Okay, so here we go. We're spending most of our time doing extracting zip files. Okay, so that was fast. I'm just gonna do it again just to, for some fun and to show off a little bit clear the screen boom okay so i think that's really cool no internet and it's way faster and this will be the common case right so if you have your modules on disk that will of course be the very fastest you can get if you don't have your modules on disk like you're in a ci cd run uh, it will be fast in most cases because if you've built your project before and you're using athens or you're using another module repository you're going to have all of those modules already in the storage database for whatever repository you're using, like Athens. So it's just gonna send those files down, all those zip files down right out of its storage. 
no internet connection necessary, really, really fast. Okay, so let's check out some cats now. Reload our server, and we've got some cute little cats here. Okay, so I'm gonna shut that down as well. And that's gonna about do it here. So we've got, uh, I went through this part of the demo, user Athens while offline. And I'd really encourage you to go check out Athens. Um, we make sure that it's like a really, really inclusive community and we're really welcoming. So if you're interested in using it uh, or you do use it and you have a question uh, or you wanna contribute or you just wanna say hi, uh, any of those things is all good. Just come check us out in uh, the Athens channel in the Gophers Slack. And I'll add a show note for how to do that as well if you're not familiar with the Gopher Slack or the Athens group or anything like that. Finally, uh, there are other proxies out there besides Athens. You can click on this link here and check out all those proxies. Uh, some of them are hosted uh, for you so you don't have to run anything yourself. Some of them, like Athens, you can run yourself and kind of isolate yourself so you don't have to rely on a third party uh, and you can store your own modules in your own database. Um, and all of those are sort of valid options depending on your use case. So I really encourage you to check all those out. Uh, there's tons of documentation here about the module download protocol as well, so you can read up on that. Uh, and otherwise, I just really encourage you to use a module repository, um, a module server, I should say. Uh, and oftentimes those are called repositories. Uh, that's gonna make your builds faster and more reliable. And that is the direction that the Go ecosystem is taking now as well. So with that, uh, I want to say thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care, Gophers.